So I'm back in the treehouse today to talk about falling gas prices. Everyone asking me what's going on with gas prices. They're falling, they're continuing to fall. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions about it, so let's address it. Um, the first thing to address with falling gas prices, if we, we have finally gotten our gasoline inventories, our supply in the United States up to the five year average level. That means we have 220 million barrels of gasoline in stock, in inventory, ready to go. That's the highest we've had in quite a while. It's the first time we've been within the five-year average range in about nine months. When gas prices were really high months back, we were well below that range. Um, we got down to about 180 million barrels of gasoline uh, in inventories at one point, which is pretty low. That was driving gas prices up. Um, another thing that is uh, helping gas prices fall is lower demand. Demand for gasoline in the United States has fallen um, by about 500,000 barrels a day. Now, this isn't anything weird. This is what it does every winter, and it's doing it again. And with the United States producing more of its own light, sweet, crude, that we are able to convert into gasoline that is causing inventory levels to rise. Yes, the more gasoline that we produce domestically with domestic oil, the more we can refine. So what I mean is a barrel of light sweet crude oil um, that is produced in the Permian Basin or the Bakken or the Scoop Stack or the Eagleford, a barrel of that oil produces more gasoline then a barrel of heavy sour crude, a barrel of Canadian oil, a barrel of Middle Eastern oil, it produces more gasoline. So now that we are refining more and more of our own oil, um, we're getting more gasoline out of it. That is also helping inventory levels rise and helping gas prices fall. In addition, uh, lower oil prices. Oil has fallen to the low 70s. Part of that, uh, part of one of the things contributing to that is lockdowns in China for COVID. Uh, we expect that to stop pretty quickly. There's a lot of protests. There's a lot of anger. They're already talking about um, subsiding some of those lockdowns. That will bring back more oil demand in China. Uh, another thing is OPEC didn't meet their target of cutting production by 2 million barrels of oil a day. Um, they fell a little bit short of that. I can promise you next month, they will not fall short. They will absolutely um, do that. So that is what's causing uh, lower gas prices. That and um, a really bad flu season. There's a lot of people out of work, sick with the flu. Um, COVID is still floating around, but there's a lot of people out of work right now at home sick. That's causing demand to fall. Uh, that is a short-term thing, obviously, and won't last very long, um, but that's another contributing factor. Uh, the national average for gasoline has fallen to $3.33 a gallon, which I don't like using the national average, but you kind of have to. Um, the majority of states in the United States now has gasoline below $3 a gallon. There are states reporting uh, gasoline for $2.19 a gallon. Where I live, it's about $2.69 a gallon. Um, and of course, in some states, it's still well over $4. In some states, it's well over $5, close to $6. If you live in one of your states, that is your state's government in action. That is all I can tell you. Um, so higher fuel taxes, fewer refineries, more regulations, all of those things contribute to high gas prices in some of those states. Um, so that's what's going on with gas prices. The next question Will it stay this way? Me personally, I don't think so. I think we're gonna find a bottom pretty soon and we're gonna see gas prices start to rise again. A couple of reasons. OPEC is going to follow through with their 2 million barrel a day cut of oil production. Um, they didn't quite make it last month. I think they're gonna get there this month. Secondly, uh, price caps on Russian oil. Several countries has set a price cap of $60 per barrel on Russian oil, and they've also added, added some additional sanctions. What does this mean? This is going to mean that Russia is going to produce less oil. That's 
right? So I would expect in the next 30 days to see oil prices start to creep back up and gas prices, depending on how much inventory we have in stock, will slowly start to follow that. Um, so I do think this is somewhat temporary, 30 to 60 days, maybe, and then we'll start to see things climb. You really start to see glass, gas prices climb again, obviously, when we get into spring and demand really picks up. So uh, will we see gas prices um, go back up to the levels we saw in the last year? I do not think so. The United States has increased its production significantly by well over a million barrels of oil a day. Our inventories are, are getting healthy again. Um, we're not, I'm not predicting at all, I'm not seeing at all or forecasting at all gas prices to go back to a $5 a gallon national average. Um, we could easily see them go up 30, 40, 50 cents a gallon um, in the next three, four months. That's a no brainer. I think that's easily going to happen short of just a really deep recession in the United States or something like that. So that is what we're seeing with gas prices. That is why gas prices are falling. Now let's look at home heating. Uh, a lot of people use natural gas for home heating. Um, a lot of people are fully electric. There are people that use heating oil. Um, it really doesn't matter what you use. If your home is all electric and it's tied to a grid that is powered by natural gas, that will make your home heating bill more expensive. If you use natural gas itself um, to heat your home, it's going to go up. Natural gas prices are starting to go up again. It's well over $6. It had gotten down into the $5 range. Home heating oil um, is higher than it normally is, but it's not near as high as people were thinking it was going to be just a couple of months ago. I don't know if you've noticed, but diesel prices have fallen quite a bit. Where I live, diesel is over a dollar a gallon less than it was just three weeks ago. Um, all the talk about us running out of diesel and the diesel shortage, you know, that was obviously a bunch of bullshit um, propagated by media and politicians. Let me give you a bit of advice. If you ever see anything on the news about oil, about gas, anything energy related, um, half of it's probably bullshit. You might just come over to my YouTube channel or my TikTok and ask me, hey, what's really going on here? And I'll give you the truth. Um, because I don't care about your politics. Um, I'm an expert in the oil and gas industry and I'm here to educate people. Don't give a shit what side you're on. No offense. I just really don't care. Um, so yeah, home heating bills. Uh, I see them rising this winter. Um, we're fixing to get into the deepest, darkest part of winter. Um, people are going to start using a lot more natural gas. People are going to start using a lot more electricity. And since prices are already going up, before that has occurred, they're only going to continue to go up once that does occur. So if you see in the news a big winter storm coming, or what do they call it, a polar vortex, or anything like that, that puts the whole nation basically under a deep freeze, you're going to see those natural gas prices and those electricity prices go up. Uh, one, because 60% of all electricity in the United States is generated with natural gas. So unless you live in an area that uh, relies mainly on uh, renewables or coal, you're going to see those prices go back up. So brace yourself for that. I don't think it's going to get crazy high, but they are going to go up for sure. So that's my take on why gas prices are falling in the United States. Please comment, like, subscribe. If you have questions, I will be happy to answer those questions. Um, I haven't been making a lot of content the last few days. I'm just exhausted. I don't know if you can tell. I'm working myself to death. I'm a workaholic, but I'm going to try to start putting out more content. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions at all, please ask. I try to answer uh, questions as best as I can, especially really good questions. It, I, I'm going to be honest. If you ask me something stupid, probably not going to reply to it. But if it's a good question, it comes from a good place, non-political I'm probably going to answer it. So there you go. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, whatever. You guys have a great Sunday. Take it easy.